out there in Packer Nation, and welcome to the Absolute Packer Podcast. We are on episode 41, uh, which thankfully will be the last podcast we'll have to deal with in terms of the 2018 Packers team. Um, we had some holiday stuff going on with all the guys, including myself, so we missed a week there, but uh, we wanted to recap a couple of the obviously the games, but even the Jets game before a little bit, and then go into uh, the beginnings of some of some off-season stuff and well, let's just chat about, you know, other things that have, you know, continued to, to plague this team, I think, in some uh, respect. Um, there's a lot of coaching stuff going on right now in terms of who they're interviewing and stuff like that. We're going to leave that to later because there's still just so much to to go on there, and every five minutes there's another uh, rumor with somebody else. So um, without further ado, uh, you know, the Lions, or excuse me, the Jets game, um, that was an entertaining game. Uh, it was, I can't remember the exact score, but they won in overtime, and Rodgers threw a touchdown, threw a dart to Devontae Adams on a, a slant over in the uh, the end zone. Um, that was great to see and all that. And, you know, it, it was interesting because in that particular game, it, you know, the, the, they went back and forth, back and forth. I think the Packers were down by um, – two touchdowns a few times, or at least two times in that game. And they came back from it. Um, the officiating was terrible. That's one thing I took from it. I had a, took a mental note of that. Um, the officiating. Yeah. It, um, death taxes and special teams blunders. <laughs> what, can you, what can you say with Ron Zook? But, uh, you know, the Jets game was an entertaining game. I'll kind of leave it at that. I'm glad they won. But, you know, now that uh, we found out, obviously, the next week they got their asses handed to them by the Lions that he couldn't even score a point, you know, if anything, um, it cost them draft position, I guess you could say. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of torn in terms of how you view draft position because, yeah, you want to get if, – if you're going to go – if you're going to tank, tank, right? Like, you know, other teams and other uh, leagues will, will do that. But at the same time – you know, as a fan, I'm sure you guys probably feel the same way. You want to see your team win, you know, and you want to put put the uh, the players out there that allow you to win. But at the same time, you have to kind of find that balance of, you know, is it worth winning, you know, winning eight games instead of six? Because that could mean the difference between, you know, a mid-round pick and a top 10 pick in the first round. And that's where a lot of those things change. So. I guess it's kind of in the eye of the beholder. I, yeah, I, you know, though, I think they should play to win, but they should not have their uh, golden cow. <laughs> they should, golden you know, cow. They, you know, they, they, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Reminds have me of that. It reminds me of that biblical thing where they, they found the golden <laughs> calf and then they had to. That's, like, well, that's what that is. That's crush that's it that's into from. a powder and then like drink it or something like that. <laughs> that was the first thing I saw. <laughs> hey, come on. You know, so like anybody, anybody that's coming back next year should not have been on the field. Yeah, and I mean, I, I agree with you oh, because, well, yeah. again, you want to win the game, but. You also don't. You also don't want to, you know, kind of win meaningless games and put your your main guys out there to, uh, yeah. to potentially get uh, hurt. Which, how about this? They put Aaron Rodgers out in the final game and he got concussed on like the second uh, play. That's uh, and truth be told, I don't know about you guys. I truth be told, I did not watch the final game. Um, it was not worthy of my eyes watching it from uh, based on what I saw after Twitter. So in a way, I'm kind of glad I didn't see it. Uh, I was out in Colorado, uh, mile high, doing. Uh, skiing fat biking and, and things of that nature so it, it's very sad that you know it didn't even the game was on and i was like i was doing i think i was skate skiing somewhere and um i looked down and i said oh yeah the packer game's on and then it didn't even you know <laughs> normally sundays regardless are um kind of built around the packer games first whether you're, I'm, I'm in town out of town or whatever but this season has just been so poor that uh, and it just kept trending off and off and off that I, I I truly didn't care that I didn't see it. And I've been hopping on Twitter, you know, here and there just to get a recap. And um, based on Twitter, the recap of the Lions game was uh, burn the film, you know. <laughs> uh, so getting... I, I, need to, I need to confer with Jeremy McDaniels very quickly. Nice. Um, I think okay. I think I think we can uh, we just need a simple majority. Right. So just two votes and he's out. Right. Jeremy. No, no, no. Jeremy's in. You're. <laughs> what were you saying? I'm sorry. You walked right you know, into that one. You know, yeah. if, 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 if you're not going to watch the game, mm. then why do you have a podcast? 
<laughs> That's true, right? I was thinking that. I was like, oh my God, this is this is not very good due diligence. This is not, you know, we're we're not exactly doing our job here. But uh, well, you know what? Here. I am going to I'm going to um, just because I'm shameless. I'm going to pit the blame on you guys. When I thought about the past weekend, I was like, do I need to watch the game? No, I have NFL pass. I can watch it when I get home. So I was like, mm. oh, you know, nice. Um, <laughs> did you wa- did you watch the whole game when you came back? Uh, when I came back, yeah, I did, I did watch the whole game because um, they have three versions in NFL Pass. They have the 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 version that showed on TV, the coaching version, and then just like like um, uh, the shorter version um, with just the big plays. And then the so black I, and white silent film. And right? the black and white silent film, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I watched I watched both of them, which was uh, so you watched uh, the whole Lions game when you got back. Yes, and oh, you know God, the that funny thing. Painful. It was it was horrendous. You know, the most horrendous thing that I saw was on the coach because on the coaching film, you get to see exactly what the NFL teams are are scouting and and watching uh, when they do their film study. Okay. Did you fake, see Ron Zook picking his nose? No, I was just going to say that on the okay. fake field goal, Ron Zook had his no. hands crossed, not doing a thing. There was not one coach on the sidelines that was like trying to get the attention of, of the Packers saying, Hey, hey, what you know, and there were no oh Packers gosh. that were saying anything. So no. it was it was a telltale sign of like, you know what, we gave up. Who cares? <laughs> um, yeah. I, it's no comment. You know, getting back to, to your original point, um I'll never be one that will um uh, you know, bemoan about a draft pick. I wish mm-hmm. we had a higher draft pick, but ultimately I want to see this team win. I don't even care if, you know, in the position that we were in, I still want to see them win because the winning kind of parlays into the off season. I know our off season is completely unhinged right now. We don't know what's going to happen, uh, but you play sports to win. You are a fan to hopefully have your team win, you know, wait, 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 wait. Uh-oh. Are you saying are you saying winning is the only thing? Winning is the only thing. It's everything. <laughs> yes. Or what was it? Homer Simpson in one of the original Simpsons episodes, he said he was yelling at Bart from far away. He goes, Bart, remember what Vince Lombardi said? If you lose, you're out of the family. <laughs> That's right. Yes, right. Um, and, and, to, and you know, just because we wanted to talk about this, I'll provide a little context behind the victory against the Jets. Mm-hmm. Um, if they would have lost that game, that would have likely put them into the top six. Um, because right now the draft order is Arizona, San Francisco, New York Jets, Oakland, Tampa Bay with five wins, the New York Giants with five wins, the Jaguars with five wins, and then the Detroit Lions with six. Mm-hmm. So that law or that win against Jets kind of took us out of the top eight per se. If you include the tie, Let's you know. Let's say we won that. Yeah. Game. What does the tie do in a draft order? Wow. It it it'll hurt us because it gives us a better winning percentage versus saying a straight six and ten. Instead of being six and ten, we're six nine and one, which hurt our our ability. We would probably. Isn't that unbelievable? Been, it makes yeah. sense, but it's like, given how this whole season has played out. <laughs> right. Nice. Right. I mean, and and and. I'm not a fan of ties either. Um, I was a fan of the tie at the time because I was still in that playoff mode thinking, okay, we have the tiebreaker. Because if you remember back a few years ago, um, Seattle had the tiebreaker over us because they had a tie on their rec- or on their schedule. Mm. So they had the playoff, they had a higher playoff seating than we did. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm blanking on the year that that happened. But um, so I was in that, that mode of thinking that that tie was really going to help us. In the end, it really didn't. Um, so, you know, it happened, whatever. But I mean, those two games right there put us between the difference being in the top five and mm-hmm. being at number 12. So was there a huge swing in our draft position per se? Uh, you bet it was because you get to oh, the top yeah. five, you're talking about, you know, being in that elite level of talent. And being if you're in the top 10, I would almost say, you know, once you get in the 10, it's kind of getting there, but you want, if you right. get in the top 10, boy, the difference between being in the top 10 and the top 15 can be right. pretty big. Huge, huge. Um, so yeah, you're you're totally right about that. You know, um, I just looking at draft history. Top five typically, not in all cases, but typically gets you, you know, a, a, a franchise type player. Not in all cases. Top ten gets you definitely, you know, a damn good player, um, somebody that should be, you know, one of your um, one of your leaders, one of those, uh, you know, 
whatever's but um so it, it does play a big role to be at number 12 uh versus being a sat number five i mean that that plays a huge role in how they can um kind of figure out the draft board because you get outside the top 10 i mean if your idea of getting a quarterback or a pass rusher is your goal those guys the the top notch guys are going to be gone by that time in most cases so Sure. Where, yeah, where that's the Packers. It puts the Packers right on the verge of being able to get that type of uh, difference maker. Um, you know, well, I don't know truly, you know, what the draft order is going to be looking like and, and the players available and how that all shakes out. But, mm-hmm. you know, we sh- either way, we should be able to get a damn good player as long as we draft right. So, yeah, I agree. Um, so with Aaron Rodgers, um, you know, obviously there's the he needs to play. They need to play to win camp and then there's the he needs to sit his ass down once we're out of the playoffs because we need to protect our investment um i am in the he needs to sit his ass down protect that investment camp um you know i'm kind of talking both sides of my mouth because you want to see your team win but uh what this it's it's aaron Rodgers we're talking about here it's not um Kenny Clark, you know, and that's not disparaging Kenny Clark by any means, you know, this is your 150 million bajillion dollar guy. This is, yeah, I think there's a difference there. I think there's a difference between, uh, playing to win and, uh, and setting yourself up to win, you know, like uh, the the best chance to win is by having Aaron Rodgers on the field. Fine. But we don't need to win that bad. Right. Well, you I'll tell you what. Play. You want to see them play hard. You want to see them play well. If Aaron but... Rodgers is not on the field, they ain't winning. They got right. shut out at home to a shitty team. But They're you not know what? If, if, him. But 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 if we never have a backup that is able to win in those situations, that's never going to change. So right. like, I agree. It, it, I agree. And it just goes to show too. Obviously, it shows how top heavy and out of whack this roster is. It's so top heavy with Rodgers, you know. Yeah. Uh, and many other teams that have. Uh, elite quarterbacks are in similar, not the same, but similar situations. But it just exposes when he's not playing, they are horrible. They're, this roster, and now they are injured. You know, there's all there's lots of injuries. Did you see the injuries that the Lions had though? A lot. They yeah. had a very similar list of injuries. But their and talent, their, their depth was was better than ours overall. They're not I mean, very good, though. They, they, they didn't not. have guys coming off the street like Eddie Pleasant uh, playing in the secondary. They didn't have they, that. So They did have some three- and fourth-string guys hanging around there. You know, not a ton, but they were decimated at some point. They had a similar amount of injuries. I'm not saying they, you know, maybe they were two uh, starters and some backups, um, more backups than starters, shall we say, but um, on injured reserve. I guess I'm just talking injured reserve, but um, – Okay. I mean, look at <laughs> shut out at home by a bad team. It's, is it the Lions? Sure. You know, everybody's like, oh, we used to beat the Lions all the time. Well, they beat us the last four times, I think, at Lambeau or something. Right. Um, well, four times sh- straight. Shut out and Rogers got a concussion. concussion. Yes. And that's his third concussion of his career, which when, when you start getting above two, you start getting into that, that no pun intended, the foggy zone. Um, you know, I mean, truly, if we sit here and let's say, for example, that we're, we're, you know, starting training cap next year and he still has effects kind of like Sam Shields, let's throw him into the equation. I mean, yeah. he was pretty much jet and soddy here because, uh, you know, he had so many concussions and they were very, very traumatic to his overall health. What if Aaron is in that same boat now? Who do we put? I mean, everybody has to have accountability. So who is accountable for him being out there? Now, it seems like I'm kind of contradicting myself because I'm all about winning. But in that situation, it was a risk reward proposition. There was was ridiculous. He should not have been on the fucking field. Him being out there. Period. End of story. And that is not. That is not. You know, um, what's what's the term I'm looking for? You know, I suck at this stuff, and the memory's still hazy. But um, after, you know. Monday morning quarterbacking, if you will, because, oh, we didn't know he'd get hurt, blah, blah, blah. He should not have been out there, period, end of story. Come on. Ridiculous. Right. Stupid. And we didn't know. And honestly, we had to go into this offseason saying what Deshaun Kaiser could be. Do you know I mean, who, do you know who um, whose fault it is? You asked, you know, who's accountable, whose fault it is? It's Mark Murphy. All uh, this yeah. shit is Mark Murphy. He wanted to get interjected into football operations. Boy, howdy, he did. And it buck stops with him. All this crap about, in my opinion, you know, is is uh, Philbin going to say you got to sit Aaron? Bullshit. It, you know it, who makes it, You know who makes that decision? It's Murray. Right. 
Right, but who who literally, I mean, let's point the finger at somebody. Who put us in this position overall? Ted Thompson. I mean, there was no reason that we were in this situation. I disagree. There was no reason that we were in this situation. He put us Ted in this Thompson position. Ted Thompson putting a horrible— who allowed, us, who allowed Ted to be put in this position? Mark Murphy. He missed on Ted. He should have pushed him out the door two or three years earlier. That's Mark Murphy. This all goes up the top, baby. It does, but, I mean, he, Mark Murphy's been saying he's going to make the decision here. He's going to make the decision here. He has not been making that decision. So Exactly. So the buck stops truly, with him. You can, I think Ted, Ted, Ted screwed it up, no doubt. Ted screwed up the drafts. He's had poor drafts. But who allowed that to happen? Mark Murphy. I think it's, I think it's patently obvious that they let him go a, two or three years too late. And those two or three years were the horseshit drafts they had. You know, so again, Mark Murphy was sitting over here, you know, fooling around with all the business stuff and doing a good job at that. I'll give him that. But then when he looks over at the football side and says, I need to interject myself in there, you know, we have one of the most tumultuous, one of the worst seasons in recent memory when he puts in this ridiculous reporting structure. Ridiculous. Um. I, I don't know what else to say about that, but in my mind, even Ted screwed up, yes, when he was a GM, but the fact that Murphy allowed that to continue to happen, it goes to Murphy. Everything goes to Murphy. What do you think, Elliot? I don't know. I'm stewing on that because, I mean, yeah, the, the, the top he of the wanted <laughs> foot. He wanted to get into football, right? He wanted to get into the football operations, I should say. If you do that, guess what? You reap what you sow. He's at the top of the football chain now. Well, he you know, honestly, own he owns this whole goddamn season. Him. Honestly, if you want to put it on anybody, it's Bob Harlan because Bob Harlan was the one that had this big, you know, uh, plan when he retired of having Mark Murphy there. So mm. I'm gonna, I'm I, gonna, I, I hear you. I hear you there. You know, that is I that is a. When, I did not agree when they when they brought him in uh, back in 2007, eight, whenever it was. Um, I did not agree with that move because I didn't see anything more than a businessman uh, with a suit and tie on. Truly. I think at that at that time though I hear you at that time, the structure was Ted's the GM, and Mark is the business guy. The the delineation right. was how it should have been. Now Ted, there are rumors out there that he was losing some mental capacity. I'm not saying that it really did happen, but he really slipped up and he lost his edge. So mm -hmm. during that time, the structure was, you know, I'll say the way it should be. You know, there is no perfect structure, but there's a reason why. 98% of the teams in the league have this structure because it works and it gives you a clear lane and who owns what, you okay. know? Yep. So, so I don't know if Mark Murphy was the best guy to be team president, but he wasn't being team president and quote unquote GM, which he damn well is right now. He's halfway in everything. He's got his foot in three different things, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's where this is all on Murphy and they trotted out Philbin, you know, for this, you know, end of like season press conference the next day what the fuck was that you know that you talk about lack of accountability murphy is even further down my shit list than he was which i didn't think was possible but um you mean higher up your shit higher list? yeah what am i saying <laughs> um it's almost past my bedtime remember oh um, that's right yeah sorry <laughs> get a show on the road <laughs> um but you know who sits on that throne right now is, is ron zuck and Mark Murphy is <laughs> Mark Murphy's <laughs> clinging at his feet. Um, but yeah, this this whole season is on Murphy. I'm sorry. The whole, yeah, I agree. you know, injuries are injuries, blah blah blah. But when he he comes out and he says Brian Gutekunst is the GM. Oh wait a minute. Now we're gonna have this goofy reporting structure, and it's gonna be Russ and me and Mike and blah blah. blah. And then you know Mike's gonna hang on one more year, and then we're gonna fire him mid season. They're structured like they were in the '80s, and they're fucking playing like it too. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, it's like, what do you expect? But here's you know? the problem. We, I mean, who holds Mark Murphy accountable? We have a board of directors, but they're pretty much like, you know, they own realty companies and yeah. uh, businesses, local businesses in the Green yeah. Bay area. That's These are the not football part. people. These are not football people. So, yeah. we, we, we truly don't have, like you just mentioned, we do not have a true, you know, point of authority that says, okay, this person's accountable to this person, so on and so forth. We don't yeah. have that because we don't have football people. Well, we don't have an owner, which, you know, I, I sent you guys that message the other day in Facebook where I was talking about how Dan Snyder is absolutely ruining the Redskins. And I, I read that article and I'm like, thank the lucky stars. The Packers right. don't have some, you know, ridiculous bumbling owner who has no idea what he's doing. But, you know, in instances like now where if you don't have an owner, but you have a guy who kind of sits 
he's the president of a company, for lack of a better term. You know, mm-hmm. that's how that's how it's so much structured. So to your point, you know, who does Murphy report to? Well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up, and it's like he reports to himself. So, and he damn well knows all of this stuff he's doing. Uh, the last, I'll say, the last couple of years, going back to 2000, 2017 through now and even moving forward his legacy is on the line he knows it. he can't screw up this hiring um he, he's not dumb these guys they read their clippings they know what's going on um so he's got to know what this looks like you know i'm not saying he's, it's going to make him do the right thing but um he knows he's got to know and what is the right thing you want him to resign no and you know this is all up for debate um to me, the way I think this should have, I'll just go over hypothetically why I think it should have been handled. I mean, he screwed up on Ted. He let it go too long, right? Um, now, was that on the board of directors not going to Murphy going, hey, Ted's over there, you know, sleeping all the time during meetings? Um, no. Uh, but Murphy should continue to do, in my opinion, what he's good at and what he's been doing with this organization. Business. Stick to the business side. The GM... Uh, needs total control of all personnel, the team, the coaching staff, all that stuff. And that's, you know, again, that's the way it, sh- it has been and should be. It has been that way since Ron Wolf came. What was it, 1991, I think. And, you know, there's a reason that's worked. And I personally think that's the way it should be. Gudikins should have full control over roster, personnel, all that stuff, coaching. Um, that's, what, in my opinion, what it should be. And what he's doing now, where he's got Russ Ball reporting to him, and he had McCarthy reporting to him, and he's got Gutekunst, and I'm going to make the final say on the hire of a coach. It's a mess. Honestly, I don't feel like if you want somebody to fit that type of mold that you're explaining, I don't think it's internal. I don't think they have anybody internally that can um, – You don't think Gutekunst you know, could do it? No, at this point, I don't believe that. Um, okay. I, I think he, I think he, he has training wheels on for a reason. You know, he's been a scout pretty much his whole career. Um, sure. Not saying he's not talented in that realm, because I was glowing about him when we signed him, because I, I feel like he's got the talent ability to uh, see talent and, and to get those talented players here. But mm-hmm. to leave the team on the field, I'm highly questionable whether he can do that at this point. Um, I would feel much better if somebody like a Ron Wolf, who actually led uh, previous organizations like the the Oakland Raiders, like he just came from when we got him in 91. And the Jets, and he, too, didn't he? Was and he the Jets, the right, right, right. So, I mean, he had previous previous experience. Right now, mm-hmm. Gutenkunz was pretty much in a training mode this year with and Ted he's, Thompson. And he's and kind of worked his buddy. way up. Yeah, he's worked the way up through the Packers. So he's he's come from the inside, you know, and I don't, yeah, from within. I, I don't want to knock him down because I think he has the ability to do it. But we're at this point in time, I don't think that he can. I don't think he has the tools to do that. Um, That's interesting um, because, I mean, I'll say this, you know, he's had, what, essentially one year mm-hmm. to, to kind of do what he's done, and it hasn't been that great. His his first draft, in my opinion, isn't looking that good. He's got some good players, but um, that J.K. Scott pick, <laughs> big thumbs down. Sorry. That's not looking good. Hunter Bradley, all that bullshit, not looking good. Jair Alexander looks pretty good. Um, I'm missing somebody else, and I apologize. But uh, uh, like, there's 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 two there, there's yeah the the two receivers. I'm sorry. Um, I think um, those are looking pretty good. But you know, it's it's early on that yet. But his his foray into free agency was not good either. But it's one year. It's one time. It's one year. This this whole season, in a way. Seems like the perfect storm of, of bad things happening. Lots of injuries. Aaron gets hurt early. All that kind of stuff. And then there's even worse communication with McCarthy, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's it's one year. If you give – if we give a GM, in my opinion, in my opinion, less than three years, we're the Browns. You know, you got to give a, a GM – you can't give him a year. You can't get, in my opinion, even two, especially when the team's at the position it's at now. And maybe as I say that, the, the position the team's at now, everybody was, I don't know if it was the national media, just the national media, but everybody's like, oh, the Packers are going to win the Super Bowl. And every, nobody looked at the roster objectively. Everybody just said, oh, Aaron Rodgers is going to you know, carry this team again and whatnot. And then everything bad happens. You're like, oh, my God. But um, so I, I think we discovered through, you know, the national media, the local media, everybody discovered through the season how poor the roster was and injuries. And uh, again, how much of that is Gutekunst's fault? Some, but you can't give the guy just one year. 
No, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I, 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 I'm going to touch on something else. Uh, David Rye, the wide receiver coach. Oh, my um, God. There's been, a, there's been quite a few rumblings out there that uh, he has. That not, he's a moron, apparently. Yeah, right, right. So we have now you're talking about just one year. Mm-hmm. The unfortunate thing with rookies is one year can pretty much make or break a rookie based off of the coaching that they are providing. Don't they always say the second year is the, is the big year for the second yes. year is where you really – it's the fork in the road. You can either really take off one way or go the other for, 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 for young players, right? Right. But this okay. is where we get back to having a uh, – you know, hopefully in 2019, having a stable and cohesive and a good coaching staff that sure. can hopefully uh, train these players to, to be in the right position and make the players. Sure, I agree with that. Because the wide receivers the, this year – I mean, the one thing that I've, I've seen on the coaching film um, is – these receivers are running their routes, and when the play breaks down, they truly don't do much to try to get open. I mean, and Jimmy Graham is completely guilty of that, but, um, uh, you know, Marcus Valdez-Scantling is probably is the only guy that tries to make something happen. Where Economics or Devontae. Down as a, or Devontae, right. Um, so, you know, that is coaching to me um, because – Sure. You're trying to tell your players you got to give it 100%. If you can't get the route or you can't get open the route that you're provided, it is your job to get open. And how you do that is, you know, uh, step A, step B, step C. Um, I didn't see that this year, you know. So it, it's important to have a good coaching staff on young players because you can develop really bad habits that hopefully, um, you know, don't parlay into the year after the year after, uh, you know, hopefully this year we get, like I said, the good coaching staff that will hopefully train these guys uh, a little bit better than what we've, uh, been, you know, what they've been training this year. Um, but it's really hairy because we've depended on uh, Marquez Valdez, Scantling and Equinemius St. Brown to step right in this year. Yeah. We I agree with did, that. You know, <laughs> um, we depended on them quite heavily. So, did we get everything that we could have gotten out of them? I mean, Marquez Valdez Scantling, stat wise, you know, had over 500 yards receiving. Um, you know, stat wise, everything but good. But I think on film, uh, there were many, many uh, areas to improve upon. And hopefully that'll happen this offseason in, in the film study. Yeah, I'll say this too when you talk about they were depending on, you know, so and so, particularly with the wide receiver core or skill position players. They were, they were counting on Cobb and he was hurt. Mm-hmm. Right. Three quarters of the year. Right. 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 And so he didn't do, let's face it, he didn't do much of anything. And they were counting on Jimmy Graham and he was yep. bust Ola. So, you know, when you look back, say at the, at the training camp and all that, you're, you know, I could see on paper, you're going, well, they got, uh, you know, healthy Aaron Rodgers, healthy after the collarbone, you know, mm-hmm. um, we've got Devonte Adams, who's really ascending and he, he continued to ascend this year. You got Randall Cobb and you got, uh, Jimmy Graham. So Jimmy Graham should be your, you know, red zone threat, if you will. Cobb can be kind of slot guy. And Geronimo Miles, that's a very good point. I almost forgot about him. So from that perspective, uh, Jimmy Graham aside, injuries crush that stuff. But I also go back to, you know, think people think I love Randall Cobb, love the guy, but he's beat up to hell. He, you know, he's, he's suffered so many injuries, been in the league 10 years. He's not what he once was. He just isn't. And he was never a burner. He was very quick and shifty, you know, but he was never some burner in the slot. So I I think they were depending on him too much. And Mm -hmm. like I said, Jimmy Graham was just a disaster. Now, Geronimo Allison, I don't know much, or to be honest, remember much about the guy, but I know he's undrafted. He was a big player, but it's kind of like, this is this is your this is your plan for your other, an undrafted big guy. I mean, okay, you know that, that's all fine and dandy, but it, that, that's not a plan to have a difference maker. Right, is the best way to put it. Right, and I think in previous episodes earlier on in the season, we all said that we were highly questionable about the receiving core behind Devonte Adams. Um, you know, in, in, even relating to, to Randall Cobb and Jermaine yeah. Madison, we, we did not trust them. We I can't all believe this. I, I can't believe the front office. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe, and they got a vet in Jimmy Graham, but and he turned out to be a bust. You know, bustola. Um, yeah. But he's a tight end, but still, you know, receiver slash position player, I guess, is what I would consider him. But, you know, this is where I've always wondered. I'm like, fans know when they can see a weakness on a team. <laughs> you know what I mean? The coaches aren't dumb. The GM isn't dumb. So sometimes I wonder, do they not see that? Or is it, you know, are there other mitigating factors that are so far outside of a, a the lay fans 
um, knowledge and maybe it's just straight up salary maybe it's um you know cap maybe it's it's attitude you know what i mean because i look at randall cobb from 2011 when they drafted him i'm like damn this guy's sweet he's a really good slot receiver and kick returner you look at him in 2018 you're going he's a shell of himself making a ton of money how do people not see this i right. think that or maybe they're literally just betting that i hope he stays healthy you know maybe this is as simple as that Oh, they bet on a lot of high, on a lot of guys to stay healthy this year. I mean, stay healthy I, or even stay at the level they've been playing, but not and or not dip. And so what? What I'm kind of getting at is every single. It's like Murphy's law. Every, Mark Murphy's law. How about that? <laughs> every single thing that could have gone wrong did. Right, and that was my concern going into the year. Was the depth was going to be. Uh, hopefully, oh my hopefully God. wasn't it, the hopefully the depth wasn't going to be their detriment. It truly was this year. They might have uh, the best, the, the best. They might have the worst depth in the league. Yeah, Good I Lord. mean, you know, speaking of depth, I think there there are some positives. I mean, we we saw Tyler Lancaster, and I hope that he mm -hmm. develops. Um, but I. I saw him getting double teamed a whole hell of a lot, and he was holding his blocks really well. I mean, he's, he's good beating too. blocks too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is an undrafted rookie that we're talking about out of Northwestern uh, sure. that really did pretty well when he was relied upon in the second half of the year. Um, you know, I think you you talked about Oren Burks. I don't think we saw enough of him, and I was really surprised that he didn't play a lot more. But the the other thing that I think I that saw, tells you something. You know, if he's not tells playing you a lot. But, you know, I saw, and, and maybe people won't agree with me, but I saw an Antonio Morrison. I saw a headhunter. I saw a guy that just seeked out the ball yep, carrier. I agree with that. On obvious, agree with on that. obvious running downs. Um, he found the ball carriers pretty easy. I think he's he should be a really solid addition to their depth chart next year. Um, not starting, but, I mean, he That's should true. be there, That's true. You know? Well, to your point, not starting. But will he? Because there are, I would say the Packers do have a lot of guys who go, this guy would be great for depth. They shouldn't oh. be starting. And the Packers <laughs> straight up just start him, you know? Right. And that's, I, they start and they start an uh, astronomical percentage of these guys that they shouldn't versus other teams is what I'm saying, you know? Right. Uh, right. And that's, we're not disparaging, you know, these guys because they are who you are. It's, it's not X's and O's, it's Jimmy's and Joe's, as they say. Um, well, it's the, it's the quadrilateral of authority. <laughs> You know, Correct. And I and I harp on it, but like Mason Crosby missing five, six field goals, the guy should sit for a while or permanently. You know, there and even if it even if it hurts the team in the short term, because you need accountability. Otherwise, you know, well, you know that. At, accountability I'm, did not exist this year and it completely yeah. blew up in their face. The accountability train ran off the tracks into the ocean. <laughs> and I'm looking at Jeremy's number six here, um, you know, about Rogers basically calling plays on the on the fly yeah. and i th i think that 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 dovetails right into that uh you know if 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 you, if you have your quarterback just sidestepping the coach at every turn how's and, that for um you know that little bit there sorry to interrupt but that little bit there yeah. that'll be a great uh, tool to lure other coaches for the interview for <laughs> right mm -hmm. although i say that tongue in cheek but at the same time i guarantee you some other guys are doing that rogers may be doing it a lot he probably was but i think it'd be naive to think that even brady might be going you know here and there even more than we think you know he's going fuck that we're going to run this or even you know phil rivers or um no, I, but, you know, but, rogers but tom, doing a lot don't get me wrong but but tom brady well, isn't going out there and like telling individual guys i want you to do this i want you to do this yeah, mercedes lewis was talking about um yeah. the play coming in mike mccarthy set in the play and rogers pretty much saying no and then telling Devontae adams to run this and Barf. then telling mercedes to run this Barf. well that is a problem Oh, yeah. huge problem at Favre 2.0. It is just crazy how, how you know, and that's why I, I cannot get over these people that do not want to point any blame at him. I point a, at least a third of the blame of this year on Aaron Rodgers. You know why they don't Just point blame at him? You know why they don't point blame at him? Because <sighs> and I'll tell you why. They'll look at that and they'll go, I don't blame him for doing that because he's got nobody to throw to in his no. boss's horse shit. That's what no. they'd say. I'm not saying it's right. I'm yeah. saying that's what they'd say. No. They'd say the offense is terrible and his skill position players are terrible. No. That's well, what they'd say. That's what they well, would Well, you know say. what? If, 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 if the ground is moving under their feet, how are these receivers ever, ever going to get better? Sure. <laughs> right, right. Sure. I hear you. You need, I mean, you do need some consistency, no doubt, um, and continuity and whatnot. But, uh, man, I'm and just it's, it's, it truly is a quadrilateral of authority. Like, there are four points on this side. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, yep. it's, 
and it's just that is just not a, that's not a workable system so i i don't really i wouldn't want to be that i wouldn't want to be the coach coming in i mean i'd take Fuck a paycheck no. but um, that's what that's why i think this this position is not as attractive as a no, lot of people. i don't think it is More they keep on saying you know and it, but it's a lot of outsiders that don't have the inside perspective on this team that don't truly understand what happened this year you know they just keep on saying i mean it's the most attractive job because you have aaron Rodgers, the most gifted athletically talented quarterback of all time and it's well, the most what? talented and it's the most uh you know attractive job because it's the packers just us us you know and, and i might say us i mean uh Packer fans in general and whatnot. Um, the, the Packers brand has a lot of cachet, no doubt, but I right, think we got to right. quit um, leaning on that, especially the way things are right now. Like, he's, I mean, it's the right, any coach would come in here and be like, this roster shit. I'm sorry, you know, and it's going to take a while to turn it over. And you got, you got a petulant quarterback. And I think Murphy sitting up there going, well, the Packers brand name is outstanding. It will, it will never lose its luster. Be no. careful, buddy. Be careful. Right. Right. Well, I, you know, like we, we're we're even kind of on the outside, right? I, mean, I would love to to hear inside. Hell no, the we're on the inside. Like, we're on the inside. I got well, everything bugged. I got everything bugged well, over there. But <laughs> what? But what I'm saying though is, I would love to know if you know how much of the outside hype seeps in, or and how much of the you know how how much do they realistically, truly understand and are candid with each other, or do they all just uh, you know have this reality distortion field? You mean just anybody at, like the uppers at Lambo, the yeah. quadrilateral out of authority, or uh, yes, outside? Yes, yes. Okay. The, 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 everybody, everybody involved in the team, right? Like, do they understand the severe, the the, the lacking of of so many things? And... Uh, they got to be starting to. That's a really fair question. Sure. Um, and the reason. I, I mean, if you look, let's go back to Mark Murphy. Like I said, the buck stops with Mark Murphy. Past two years, you didn't have an, a healthy Aaron Rodgers last year. But um, I think the roster was obviously exposed last year, right? The rest of the roster. Um, you get a quote-unquote healthy Aaron Rodgers this year, and everything else just – he's if he doesn't see – Everything, you know, give me one thing about the team, not business-wise, one thing about the team that's trending upward. You know what I, I mean? Love them. And that's crazy. I mean, I, right when I said that, I'm like, eh. And, you know, it, me personally, I, I am really, as a fan, uh, I'm really, really, really excited and fascinated to see Aaron Rodgers work in a new, new offense. That's oh, basically, totally. that's totally. where my – as a, as a, you know, an, an up, we'll call it, um, you know, something on the team that, that's going upward. To me, that's that's my own definition of what upward would be. I can't mm -hmm. wait to see Rodgers operate in a more up to date, dynamic offense. You know, but that is not going to change or affect the lack of talent around him, the lack of talent on defense, special teams, which. Ugh. Well, I mean, let's let's think about this too, because you you mentioned Daniel Snyder uh, earlier on in the in the podcast here. Um, back in the day, uh, when he took over ownership for the Redskins, he was the guy that would um, pretty much spend his war chest. Yeah, he would do everything. Anybody. Free agents, blah blah blah. He's blah. Albert Hainsworth was your was your guy. Oh my I mean, God, I remember that. Right. I remember that. What a disaster. Right. But that was his MO was he was going to go out and get the best players, what he thought were the best players. And how did that pan out? It, it was horrible. So th are the Packers going to are the Packers thinking right now that it's it's dire straits? No, they're going to go into it very calculated. They're going to go into it, not, you know, mortgaging the future on this team. Uh, you know, so we can't expect a Daniel Schneider type to happen this offseason. Are they going to be aggressive with building this team? I think so, because like you said, they the talent is truly not not there um but they're not going to go out there and they're not going to sign you know demarcus lawrence they're not going to sign d4 they're not going to sign earl thomas they're not going to sign top of the line talent and just mortgage the future away yeah. because once the future is done and aaron Rodgers is out of here wow it's going to be redskinville where you know there's gonna be some lean lean years because all of your cap oh. money is used from previous years yeah no that's a very good point where you got to think. I'm not sure, but you got to think the quadrilateral of authority. I'll, I'll start with them. Um, they don't believe it's complete dire straits. They have to recognize that things need to turn around and turn around quick. But I would be, to your point, I would be stunned in this offseason if Gutekunst goes out and gets 
you know, the marquee free agent at any position or whatever, I would be stunned. Right. You know, right. if it did happen, I'd be like, hey, that's kind of interesting. But I would also look at it, you know, from the flip side going, I don't know, buddy, you know, we, you know, so you want free agency, but you want the tier two and the tier three, in my opinion. That's what you always want is tier two and tier three. Right. You know, when, and, do you, when do you really want tier one? Um, never, in my opinion. Just well, in risky. free agency, you don't because it's very, it's highly risky, but mm-hmm. you have to be able to draft Will. And that's yep. why we're, we're in the predicament that we're in because since 2015, which, uh, you know, 2015, we don't have any players remaining from that draft class. Uh, you know, we've had 2016, uh, 2017 hasn't been all that great, but I mean, we've had drafts that have killed this team overall from top to bottom. So Con- Successive. Jeez. Successive. So you cannot, as an organization, keep the winning trend with that type of poor drafting that's where team that's where teams are built that's where team and free agency should be used to fill in the holes it should not be your mo it should not be how you build a team because truly free agency is not the ticket to winning it's proven um it's it's well known so you cannot go out there and you cannot go out and and sign like i would mention the players before i mean look at look look at minnesota they went out this offseason and they're their MO was to get a new quarterback in Kirk Cousins. Guess what? They're sitting at home right now. And that was the I, dumbest. And I think I, dumb. I, I, it could have been me. It, be it, could have been you. it could have been me or you, Andy, but I, I, I think it was me. I sent you guys um, a link to the quarterbacks that are currently playing in the playoffs. Yep. And I mean, none of them are, except for Drew Brees, none of well, them you're are talking salary, wise. Million per, salary, salary wise. wise. None of them are above 20 million per year, except for Drew yep. Brees. The top six yeah. salary quarterbacks aren't even in the playoffs. There crazy. you go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Tom Brady gotta, played number fifteen. If you if you want to believe yeah, that's crazy, you, you got to believe that 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 sheet is making its way across the league. You know, like yeah. that that is that is not a stat that can sit. Like that's gonna you're, you're saying that that sheet has got to be making its way to yeah. the. Uh, I think we're at a, collect, I think we're the next collective bargaining agreement. I well yes, but but I also think it's gonna it's gonna have an impact on any uh you know let, let's say uh, I don't know who who wins the Super Bowl this year. It's a new quarterback and. They want to, you know, they want to have a big payday. I don't think they're going to get the big payday like like the, the ones in the past have. I just don't see. You know, I think, I think, Aaron, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be on top for a few years. Uh, yeah. It could be, but let's say let's say for example, Russell Wilson wins the Super Bowl because he's coming up on a contract. I can guarantee you, if they win a Super Bowl, he'll be well, the he'll Joe Flacco. Rogers. He'll be the Joe Flacco of 2019. Oh. he will oh, be. I, I don't you know, know, I don't think I, so. I think I could see. Oh hell yeah, I could see that. Him. I could I could see that for sure. Wait. Remember when Flacco they won the the uh, yeah no I know what happened with Flacco I just uh, I just I just don't see them. Uh, you mean the Seahawks? I, I, yeah, I don't see the Seahawks just bending for that. I just don't. That'll be interesting. I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to win. So so it's it's a bit academic, but <laughs> right, right. Well, here's an interesting thing, and I I have no idea. And now we're kind of get into uh, more semantics and things about. Um, you know, salary structures and quarterbacks and whatnot. But is there any quarterback or have they, have there been any talk about a quarterback structure? And I'm thinking right now, I'm just thinking of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. So they'll say, you will always, your, your, your salary will be structured as such where you will get X up to, but no more than X percent of the cap. Yeah, I, I, I don't doubt that likely won't happen. Um, it won't, but you know what I mean? Right. I think I that'd mean, be interesting. It'd be you know, great. You'll, you'll always get, I don't know, he's, he, he commands a lot right now. Let's say it's like 25%. You'd be like, you will max at, we'll look at your, we'll look at your contract and you will never get more than 20% of the cap. Some, you know, you'll get 20% here. You may get 18% here, but you will never get X percent. You will, your, your ceiling will be X percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel, I don't feel like players should get more than, than 10% of any salary cap. And because, I'm just kind of throwing out a number, you know, but right. what do you think, Elliot? But, I do. Do I think, do I think that they'll. That structuring they'll, a contract. Uh, what do you think of just the idea of structuring a contract uh, to get X percent of the cap? And this is for quarterbacks I, I'm talking about. I don't know. I think that's dangerous. I just, I think. I, and I you think max it. That's my thing. You do have to put mechanisms in. You can't just be like, you know what you say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't know about any of that. I, I feel I, I just think I think like uh, I think this season has just put us at a uh, inflection point of uh, of the, the overpaid quarterback 
no doubt. I, I, I think that it's going to, you know, it, whatever, it's going to go up eventually again. But I think I think it's going to plateau a little bit for a few years. I hear you. But I think, to Jeremy's point, let's just say, for the sake of argument, if the Seahawks go and win a Super Bowl, Wilson's going to make more than Aaron Rodgers. I guarantee you. I, That's just the way I things are going. That I he's, been, that he's, he's been to more Super Bowls. And, well, let me see. Uh, maybe not more, but it wouldn't. Let me put it this way then: if he made more than Rodgers, even a little, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Would not. Well, I mean, he would. He would at least somewhat have it coming. I mean, like Kirk Cousins and uh, I don't know who else is in the, the, the other five. Like they're they're just they're all overpaid, all of them. Um, and I, I don't think anybody should be paid more than what Aaron Rodgers is making, and he's overpaid. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's 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 tough because yes, you you need a good quarterback, but as we're showing, uh, the top highest paid quarterbacks are not in the playoffs. Like that has to mean something, and it, it, and I think it means a couple of things. I think that uh, the the money after a certain point doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it's not a it's not a motivator. And if if you are a person who is only motivated by money, then maybe you're not the player we want. No shit. I mean, I, I, that's but unfortunately a lot of players are thinking that way. They only care about the dollar signs. You know, that's that's the way that this is trended. And I mean, yeah. to me, I, I get that a lot, you know, because when you're th- talking about an NFL player, whether you're a freaking gunner on the punt team or a quarterback or whatever, it's like you're getting the hell banged out of you and you have your, your window to maximize, um, you know, your, no. your pay is so small. Yeah, so and way, I, get I get that. that you know? there, but and, there, you know, and you're getting the hell beat out of you, you know. Right. The only reason, and the only reason I see a plateauing is just because of the age of the top quarterbacks. Um, I'm just going They're through the, more. I'm the 2019 you. free agency class for, for for quarterbacks. There's nobody there that's worth anything. But 2020 is quite interesting. You have Drew Brees, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, Philip Rivers, uh, Tom Brady, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, uh, Nick Foles. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you have some guys that are trending up on the younger side of it, kind of like the Foles the Mariotas and the Winstons mm-hmm. um, that could parlay um, that 2020 to be the next time that there's a highest quarterback in the league. Sure. I'll tell you this. So Tom Brady's 41, mm-hmm. 41. That's crazy. 43, 43. No. Mm-hmm. Is he really? Yep. Says right here. Get the hell out of here. Yep. Jeremy McDaniels. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. That's 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 in 2020. He's good. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> now let's get back to reality. So, um, <laughs> but I was just thinking. So there's always that comparison of Brady, Patriots, you know, Rogers, Packers, and I'm going there, and I'm going. You know, one thing that's made. Follow me on this. But one thing that's made the Patriots successful is, excuse me, <clears throat> they built the team around Brady, right? And what he can do, he's kind of their centerpiece, but they're not paying, they're paying him a lot, but they're not paying him astronomical amounts of money, right? He's making a lot of money, but they, they offset it with, you know, he'll push money out here and do things like that. He'll take less money for the team and all that. And kind of what I'm getting at there is, you know, they've, that team and the salaries and all that, that's, they've built that team to actually, barring a catastrophic uh, career ending injury, he could play till he's 45, you know, right? Hypothetically, um, so they've kind of built the team, the salary, and and all that kind of stuff around Brady, in what I would call the correct way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the Packers, I think they for a while they kind of, you know, they did it like the lopsided way in a weird way. You know, they did it where it was, you know, we got a Rogers is the center. He he is the he is the. Um, He's a linchpin of everything, you know, so we got to shove all this money at him and, you know, they got to know that that salary structure and, I, you know, will they be able to to withstand having Rogers and build the, their whole philosophy of building around him till he's 45? Hell no, you know, no way. So, but the, the other thing I guess I'm getting at is Rogers is 35 and 10 years ago, a quarterback who was 35, you'd be like, holy shit, he's done, right? Mm-hmm. What the rules changes and can't hit the quarterback and everybody, you know, they're fantastic athletes are taking care of themselves even better and better. I, I would say it's not unrealistic to think that a quarterback, you know, not everyone, obviously, and I mean, injuries can happen at any given time. There's some luck there, but a lot of quarterbacks 
could play in their into their early 40s somewhat consistently going into the future you know Easily. so Easily. so hearing that aaron Rodgers is 35 i'm not going oh shit you know you know in a way you are you're kind of going to the twilight of his career but i'm more or less saying oh shit because not because of i don't think he has the ability to do it it's because they built this team way too lopsided to not get him to, to 45 does that make sense yeah oh yeah okay yeah. You know, okay. Hopefully, I explained that correctly. But no, you did. You did. Here, here's an amazing stat according to Sport uh, Spot Track. Uh, it it pretty much keeps track of salaries of all the players, et cetera, et cetera. We were talking about Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Um, his total cash in any year that he's been a player has never exceeded nineteen point seven five million dollars. Not once has he gone over twenty million. Mm. Not once. Now, he receives bonuses for being active on game day, workout bonuses, roster mm-hmm. bonuses. I mean, his roster bonuses are significant. Uh, or in his career, he's had over $25 million in roster bonuses. And does that uh, affect the cap, or is that they're moving money around a different way? It's moving money around in a different way. So that um, those things don't affect the cap? Well, it does. It's only, if you, it's only, it does it's only, if only salary affects the cap, right? It's a Maybe combination I'm wrong. of things. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> let, let, okay, we, we, we talked about this last night. Let's take Jimmy Graham, for example. Uh, if the Packers were to release him this offseason, uh, they have a pre-June 1st designation and they have a post-June 1st designation. There's a huge difference between the two because uh, when you release a player pre-June, the full amount of the signing bonus that you received on that contract gets pushed to this year uh, th- the, like the league year or whatever. Excuse me. Uh, in, in Jimmy Graham's case, because it's a three-year contract, the two years remaining gets pushed to this year, and then the year that he did play gets pushed to 2020. So this year, if we were to release him pre-June 1st, we would have a salary cap hit of $7.3 million because he received a little little bit around uh, $11 million signing bonus, and then he had roster bonuses built in there as well. Um, so, And then $3.6 million would carry on to the 2020 cap. Now, if we were to release him post-June 1st, this year's salary cap hit would be half of that $7.3 million. And then next year it'd be half as well. So the salary cap hit would be significantly less, but it just depends on how the team wants to play it out. You know, okay. so, that does make sense. I mean, it's a little convoluted, but yeah, it's in a way it's, you know, it's like other businesses, you kind of move money around. You know, and that's all that certain, it is. That's all yeah. that it is. Okay. So you look at that and how you did that and what you said about Brady, why don't, why don't they ever do that with Rogers or why did Rogers not ever do that with the Packers? I don't know. <laughs> no idea. I, I think, you're right. And I think we touched on this. And I think you have a good point in, in previous talks that we've had where you said, did he just get to the point where you said, you know, fuck it. I'm just going to take what I can get because they're going to give it to me. Uh, you know, after yeah. seeing his, after seeing what we saw this year. with because, Well, I should delineate because they're going to get what they're going to give it to me because they're never going to build a better team around me. <laughs> right. Right. You know, yeah. so and he yeah. sacrificed over his career a lot of money, you could say, because the 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 because he never made it to the open market. <laughs> right. And I mean, you know, and I think we touched on this, too. You talked about did he have a five year window where he was truly the best quarterback uh, in the league? And as he has he shifted out of that window now? We mm-hmm. don't know. You know, I mean, I, I would hope that this isn't the downside of his career, because like you said, I mean, he should be able to play into his 40s easy if he wants to, uh, yeah. because, I mean, he's had some pretty, uh, you know, um, pretty traumatic injuries. But Tom Brady's only had one torn knee in his career. Other than that, he's been very healthy. He's so, had injuries, but not as bad as Rodgers. No, no. Like I said, the one year he tore his knee up, I think it was the first or second game of the year. First game. And they, they yeah. went 11-5 and five with Matt Castle. How about right. that? Jesus right. Christ. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's uh, it's just a huge mess to even think about all of that. But Yeah, um, this is a very interesting – I didn't quite know it, 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 we'd veer down this this path, but I think it's very interesting, and I think it, it's good to talk about um, because, you know, maybe one of the biggest – um, you know, this is one of the biggest decisions for the, the next 10 years of the franchise, let's say, if not more, because whoever comes in as a coach and coaches and players and how they build that is their plan to they, they still want to consistently be good. They, I'm sure they never want to, you know, put all their eggs in one basket. 
you know and i agree they don't want to do that they could could they go one one way a little more yeah maybe a little bit but is the next are they going to pick the next coach to not only be the coach but is what's their so with this next coach is their number one priority to maximize rogers to play longer in his career hoping he plays at least decent or is the next coach do they want him to be like we got to change the whole attitude doesn't matter what rogers thinks doesn't matter whatever you know what i mean Right. Very that's curious. A, that's, that's that's interesting because it's a very I, curious thing to see what they. In a way, you want to say both, right? But yeah, like you, but, but it's you hard could, to do you, both, right? Right. I think it might be impossible to do both. So you, you uh, have to pick. Right. And I, yeah. I, 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 like I, I think I would be more predisposed to the latter, but I just I don't think that fans have uh, the stomach or the the patience for that. And, and maybe uh, so, I hear yeah. you. And maybe you know the brass, the quadrilateral of authority, and other people, and maybe whatever. <laughs> And it'd be fantastic if they could find a way to do this was to basically hit both in the middle, you know, is to find a guy who can change the culture, give Rodgers another, um, you know, new offense, but find a way to continue to let him to play into his mid 40s. Yeah. G- giving him a system that allows him to do that. And that's why I said it'd be fascinating. If they bring in a system that's like the Patriots and what they do with Brady, there's no reason he, that guy shouldn't get to another Super Bowl or Super Bowls and play until he's mid 40s. There's no reason at all barring injury, I should say, barring injury. Because we'll see. You know, I mean, it, a I lot of people say think... Brady's Brady's more of a game manager a little bit, you know, and Rodgers I think is terrified of being viewed as some kind of game manager quarterback. Brady's still great, but <laughs> I would take it. I would, I would you know take what I mean? And win. Yeah. You know what? Uh, in 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 30 40 50 years who's going to remember that there was this guy who was great but only won one super bowl versus the guy who wins right. five six like come on right uh, yeah, if right. you care about if you care about you got winning is the only thing yeah i'll yeah, tell you so. what also helps brady i keep going back to the patriots that division is a steaming pile of dog shit and, well, and has it has been, been for so long it has been <laughs> for like two decades yeah i yeah. mean that really 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 helps them but also it sure does, you know, it sure does. it's yeah. just oh, yeah. i mean i i remember when people go ah the nfc north is crap well it's been pretty good the past few years collectively you know is it like even this year even this year wasn't that bad like i know i said no. I, I i said that i feel like they're the worst but i mean really the vikings i if anything they they were pretty uh consistent relatively consistent all season they were, they what's were all the right. worst division collect if you if you pull the patriots out of the AFC, was the afc east i think um oh, yeah if you pull the patriots out of there they got to be i mean the buffalo bills yeah. are probably yeah. the worst team in the league yeah. Some of the stats they had were just like all time horrible, you know? <laughs> I know. So, and the Dolphins are shit. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. always shit. And the Jets are, they fired yeah. their coach again. So it's like that. So that definitely yeah. helps. They are, they are the kingpin to that division by a long shot. So you can get, you know. Now, on the other hand, you know, you can also say that maybe they're just that dominant in New England. I think it's in between. I think it's somewhere in between. Yeah. They have a shit yeah, division, I do. I do too, and yeah. the Patriots are really, really good. And if the if the Patriots are that good and they're in a shit division, I mean, they're just going to run away with everything. I mean, they're talking about but, every year. It seems like they're talking about getting, you know, um, a first round bye by like the week ten. Right, and here's the deal with that: they have gone to the Super Bowl every year that they've they've had home field advantage mm. every single year. So we had it one you know, time. We got our ass that, handed to that, us. Right. So does does being in a weak division where you are guaranteed to get six victories help them? You know, in that elite status that everybody puts them in. Ah, uh, you could say so. You yeah, could say I so. Say, yeah. Man, yeah. think of the one time we were fifteen and one. We had first round by the oh, one man. time we did that. We fucking shit the bed. Ugh, it makes me so mad. I was there too. So I know we we felt like we didn't have anything to talk about. We're already past the hour mark, um, and and I would like to um, I want to table our court our uh, our head coach uh, discussion until next week. I agree. Um, would you guys? You guys sorry to interrupt real quick though. No, 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 no. Do you have Do you guys have a little bit of time? Because I'm thinking it might be good to kind of just collectively go through the position groups and just kind of you know this year and going forward what it is. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. I think we should do that next week. Yeah. Next week, fine. Yeah. You're no fun. 
I'm very fun. I just want to spread the thing out. <laughs> That's fine. I'm good with that. I do have yeah. to say, though, I'm going to put this out there. Corey Lindsley played every snap yep. for, I believe, the second consecutive year. Yep. Wow. That is unbelievable. He is. That is. He, you talk about a, uh, you know, ready, available, and he's damn near a Pro Bowl playing center anyway. Mm -hmm. He's an outstanding, he's, there's not much else you could say about the guy, you know, although Maybe. I will say Bakhtiari, he he continues to get snubbed. He 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 didn't even you know he they, he's graded and known collectively. You know I say known with air quotes as the best pass blocking left tackle in the league, and he's never made the Pro Bowl. Right, that's horseshit. But he, that's horseshit. But he's, had, but, he, but he's had two All Pros, which is is a high. Which is better? Which is better? You're right. All Pro and, is. You're right. You're right. And and today he just got voted first team All Pro, which means that he's the best tackle left tackle in the league. He was a outstanding. Him and Lindsay, obviously, you got to give Ted credit for those because Lindsay was what a fifth round pick, I believe. Uh, fourth or fifth, yeah. Fourth or fifth, and yeah. Bakhtiari was fourth or fifth. And I mean, to yeah. find a left tackle, an, an outstanding left tackle in later rounds, that's hard. <laughs> you need more. You need more hits there, and you need yeah. more Corey Lindsleys on this team. You need more guys that can play at least, you know, 12 games out of the year. We can't sure. be putting them on injured reserve when you're four games into the year. It just we have and to even get Belaga. Belaga was really banged up the whole year, but I'll, I got to give him credit. He made it through the whole year. He played well. This is, I think, it's his contract year. He's probably done. Yep. Um, he might be. I mean, he might retire. But um, you know, I got to give him credit too because he was. I bet you he was playing injured on ninety percent of his snaps. He, he <laughs> walks injured, so I know yeah, poor he guy. Was, he was playing injured, and he played pretty well. Every all things considered, he was not great by any means. What are they going to do with Spriggs? Uh, they need to improve there. That just that's that's hands down. They need to improve. Mm. But so, you know. Uh, the, so um, no, you should finish your thought. But I, I want to uh, segue into you, your uh, item number ten on on the notes uh, overview of off season podcast. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, finish your thought. No, I was just going to say. Um, actually, I don't, I don't remember. Sorry, I just, <laughs> I've been age, there. Old age. <laughs> well, you said uh, review of off season podcast. You mean like what we're going to do in the off season kind of thing? Yeah, I mean this is APP. Right. You know, okay. I mean, I, I, it'd be nice to know what, uh, or at least give our fans uh, a little bit of preview of, of what we want to do and if there's anything that we should do, you know. Sure. Um, no, I agree. You know, to be perfectly honest, you know, after my last six months and everything, you know, I don't, when you, I'm talking, I'm going to steer this towards draft and all that. I don't know anything about any college or draft picks or anything. I, I'm not going to be able to give any, any value myself. I, I think that would be good to do a podcast with that, but I am so. Well, maybe we should try to get, get somebody else in also like as a, as a guest that maybe Excuse could speak me? to those. No, no, or, no, 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 no. Or. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not if I have, hey, if I'm I have not, to go I'm out not, there, if I have to go out uh, here and lie, uh, then that's I'll do that, it. And, yeah. No. So, so the, I mean, that's the other piece. I mean, we can do our research. That's not. That's not the other. <laughs> oh man, uh, we have to do work. <laughs> please, well, I mean, please, no. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, hey, work is hard for me too. Um, but, uh, but uh, actually, like, I would like to see us have uh, some guests on. Now, like, the guests that you lined up for us last year were fantastic, Andy. So, uh, Who did I, I, I had, did I have? If correct me if I'm wrong, I had Mike Raymer. Yeah. And Jeff Kalo, the guy with the yeah, the, the Tundra Man. That's right. <laughs> I think I can get two more. I mean, I would have those guys back on too. I mean, they they were great. Both of getting great, guests, I. I and I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have more to say. So I think like that's an interesting, exciting thing. Uh, You're you know, completely right. We need to get more guests, and we we can. And I and I think that there. I mean, this season in particular, there is a ton to talk about. Yeah. So. Oh, without I, question. I I don't think we're going to be lacking for just the coaching drama. I mean, even even if a new coach is announced this next week, which I don't I don't expect. Uh, yeah, that's a good like, point. When do you guys you know, expect? I I don't know. I would say yeah. probably. April, yeah, <laughs> March. Well, I don't know. It'll be sometime after the Super Bowl. You th so you think that's it's like not, it's it's not going to go into April or March? If it does, no. then I have no faith in anything. <laughs> yeah, you're, I guess you're probably right. Yeah, uh, but I mean, they would so they definitely have somebody wrapped up by March, right? Oh, um, definitely, definitely. Oh God, yeah. I would think so, early February. So I think we have plenty to talk about up until that point, whenever that is. So sometime over the next month or so. Uh, but then also after that, I mean. 
boy, I mean, we're, we we get to we get to do sleuthing and dig up dirt on this guy. <laughs> sleuthing. Task me. I would love to do that. Nice. Right. I, I I mean, just uh, you know, really like uh, dissect this guy and uh, and you know, see if this is see if this is our guy. You know. So ba background check on his ass. Yeah, I think there's we'll order one. I think, we'll order I think, one. <laughs> I, you know what? I think we should. Uh, you know. <laughs> That might be fun. <laughs> nice. And then we'll call him. Over. Sir, uh, you claim to have gone to an Ivy League school, but we found out that you went to a junior college. You've been, <laughs> you're full of shit. <laughs> Lied on your resume. <laughs> and then and then it gets out in the media and it comes out and it says, you know, homegrown podcasts. You know, derail, <laughs> homegrown podcast in Green Bay derails coaching hiring Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, you're, a, you're a dreamer. Uh, so, uh, so I'd like to leave some gas in the tank. I want to leave some gas in the tank for next week. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry to rush things along. No, uh, no, no, I completely. But, agree. Uh, I want to drop our voicemail number five zero eight five three five five four six eight, or you can email fans at absolutepacker dot com with absolutely anything. No pun intended. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And uh, also, you can have us hit us up on Facebook. We have a Facebook uh, group. We got. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we will listen to you. Uh, I think I speak for all three of us. We would love to hear some. Uh, I know when Dakota got involved, we got him yeah. involved in the show. So, like, yeah, shout know, out to Dakota. Uh, as well. I, I think we have a track record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 really looking forward to having you know, more people uh, in Victor. So that's my piece. No, that's you guys good. Can finish off. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say uh, one thing, and that's to you guys, because um, basically what I do is, you know, for the basically the past six months, and with a large break in between there, as you know, last year when I was ill, um, I basically, you know, I, I show up and I and I and I talk and I watch the game, and that's essentially it. There's a lot of work that goes on to get this podcast. Uh, you know, ready for each podcast and 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 keep it moving and whatnot. And I uh, just want to thank you guys for for all the work you've done, Elliot. You know, you're kind of I, I view you as the IT kind of guy. You know, obviously you have opinions and whatnot, but you you keep the uh, the technical stuff going, the editing and all those things. Um, and that's the kind of stuff you don't see behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really appreciate that. And you know, anything, all in that entails and, and all that work. And Jeremy. Uh, the work that you do with, you know, film study and and just uh, anything involved with breaking down plays or games or players or things like that. Um, really appreciate that. I, I know I was, <laughs> I'm going to use air quotes, I was, I was a little more involved and did a little more research before uh, I got sick. Um, and as full disclosure, you know, my priorities have, have changed. Um, that doesn't mean I want to be lazy. I still want to do this and I still find value in it, but, but you guys have done a lot of work. Um, and I both appreciate what you've done and continue to do. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I, I truly do. And, uh, I, I thank you guys as well for, for bringing me on. And, um, you know, when Elliot talks about, you know, certain things dealing with the podcast and the IT <laughs> aspect of it, I just sit there with my mouth. I have to bring my mouth back up because I'm just like, this guy is so freaking smart when it comes to, you know, uh, creating our, our podcast it's i can't even i can't even put words to uh, our describe five how listeners. awesome Elliot. <laughs> well i think you know listeners. like i don't then they don't care they don't care about that uh, care about but it, like anything a lot of processes it's like an iceberg you know what you see on the tip is you know it, it's cool and all that but the amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see is very large and you just don't see it so it is kind of like an iceberg like i said and it's it's not easy to do some of that stuff um we're not sitting here paying ourselves any kind of huge salary <laughs> um we, we do it because we love it but it, it takes work and i know you two guys in particular are doing the lion's share of the work um so again i appreciate that i hope everybody else does too yeah. all righty go back go go back go Podcast, podcast. Chair. I know, right?